Peterson, and I'm about to enter the pinch zone with the American Lobster. Here we go. you to name a single animal from the great state of Maine, I have a pretty good feeling you'd say, the lobster. So today, the crew and I will be heading off the coast of Portland, Maine, on the rolling blue waves of the Atlantic Ocean, to search for one of these marine dwelling crustaceans. Well here we are, it's beautiful Portland, Maine, and it is a big day for everybody out there watching, and it's a big day for me because it's been almost a year since I promised that I would be pinched by a giant lobster. So today, we're going out on a lobster boat to look for one of these creatures. Now, I hear they have a crusher claw and a ripper claw. What? A what claw? A crusher and a ripper, so. Which one are you gonna get pinched by? Well, both of them, because we need to find out which one does more damage. So if you guys are ready, let's go meet our captain and head out on the water. My money's on the ripper fall. On this voyage out to sea, I will be working alongside Dave, a true lobsterman and seasoned captain of the Lucky Catch. He will be taking us out to check a handful of traps, also known as lobster pots, in which we hope to find a market-sized lobster that will ultimately be used to pinch my hand. Yes, you heard me right. Coyote Peterson is going to enter the pinch zone with an American lobster. The striped tail scorpion, powerful sting. We all know I have taken many painful bites and stings, but not that many powerful pinches. In fact, aside from a few harmless crayfish and the dungeness crab, this is poised to be my first major pinch. Ah! Oh! Ooh, wow, that's pretty bad. Ah! Many people have warned me that a lobster's pinch is powerful enough to break my hand. I know this sounds crazy, but I have my doubts. So the goal is to put this pinch to the test so that we can all find out just how painful it really is. But before I can get pinched, first, we have to catch a lobster. Here comes our first trap. And we got a lobster. We got a little one. All right. Now, this lobster we're gonna measure to see if it makes the legal size. Yeah. In order for us to keep it, it's gotta be at least three and a quarter inches across the back. That's called the carapace. Yeah. We measure from the back of the eye to where the back meets the tail. And this one is a little small. I see it's gotta that. go back. So this little guy is gonna live to swim another day. It's going back. All right. This is something that's pretty cool that Dave just showed me. See the ripper claw there? Kind of zoom in and you see all those little hairs on the edges? Uh, it is serrated, but there's also soft hairs. And watch this. Just any sort of sensitivity to those, and it will snap its claw shut. So I have a feeling that later on, when I put my finger into the ripper claw, <laughs> it's going to lock shut. All right, this one's going back out into the ocean. You ready, little, little crustacean? Here we go, ready? See ya. Believe it or not, as a lobsterman, you are first and foremost a conservationist. Only lobsters of market size can be harvested from the ocean, and females who are carrying eggs, no matter what their size, are always returned to the wild. What's interesting is they don't seem to have as much of a reach as some of the crayfish that I've worked with before. As yeah. far as like reaching behind? Yeah, as far as the reach and where they're able to get you with their, their claws, I feel more comfortable actually handling a lobster than I do most crayfish species. Yeah, that one's way too small. So it's gonna head back out into the water. Ready? We motored from buoy to buoy and pulled trap after trap. Yet so far, we had returned each and every lobster back into the ocean. 
Then when it seemed as if all was lost, we pulled up the lucky catch. Could this be the one? Oh, that's, that's a pretty good one. size one. Right. Oh, wow, that one looks huge. Nice. Oh, nice. Look at the size of that. Slide this down, right? Yep. Oh, man. That could be the one right there. You see that? Wow, look at the pinchers on that thing. I don't know, man. Dude, that one is definitely big. I'm gonna take it out, hold on. It's cool to take this out, right? Yeah, just be careful. Oh, man, dude. There's one in the corner there. Yeah, I see it. No, this one is definitely the biggest we've caught so far today. What? Look at that. That's probably what? At least a pound and a half for two pounds, right? Over two pounds, I'd say. Look at those pinchers. Oh my gosh, dude, I think this is the one. You think we're gonna get one bigger than this today? I doubt it, that's a big one. What? Look at that lobster. I don't know, man. Dude, that is a big crusher claw. Man, it is strong. Look at that ripper claw. I think that we have found our winning lobster. All right, let's get him into the water. Woo! All right, guys, and we are back in a controlled setting, and we're about to get up close with the American lobster. Now, I have one in this tank right here. Let me go ahead and take it out. Whoa, come here, buddy. Oh yeah, there we go. Hello to you too. That's a defensive mechanism right there, whacking with the tail. Now you may be saying to yourself, wow, that looks a lot smaller than the lobster you pulled out of the pot earlier today. And as a matter of fact, it is. We're gonna show you a little bit about the anatomy of this crustacean before we actually get into the pinch. Now let's start at the tip of the nose and go all the way down to the tail. The American lobster is the heaviest and longest living crustacean in the entire world. They can weigh as much as 40 pounds and people estimate can live as long as 100 years. Now you may be thinking to yourselves, Coyote, I thought lobsters were red. This creature is got black spots, it's got a little bit of blue near its joints, and for the most part, it looks like the bottom of the ocean. That's because lobsters are only red after they are cooked. And good news for Lucy here is that both her and Lonnie, the big one that we have just back here, are both going to be released into the ocean as soon as we are done filming. Now, just like a crab or a crayfish, lobsters do have gills. However, they can be out of water for a significant amount of time. You may be saying, well, Coyote, dip it back in the water. And I will, it's good for it to be dipped in there. But a lobster can stay out of the water for around two hours before it ultimately suffocates. So these creatures are extremely durable. Now, on my left, over here, you have what's called the crusher claw. And on my right, what's called the pincher or the ripper claw. Now, the way that these lobsters use their claws is they'll take the crusher and find something like a mollusk or a clam and use that claw, which has incredible power, to crush the shell of its prey. Then they use the pincher or the ripper claw to pull out the meat and they slowly eat it. And you can see, I'm gonna turn this lobster like this, See all these other little pinchers up front here? These front legs are also used to help shovel the food into the mouth, which is right down in there. Now, one of my favorite parts about the lobster are these antenna. You see that? The lobsters have poor eyesight because they live on the basin of the ocean. These antenna are sensory organs, and they shape out like this, like a Y. Can you see that? and they use these to detect movement and chemicals in the environment. This helps them find prey, it helps them communicate with other lobsters, and it helps them to navigate beneath the ocean. Ooh, and you know what this lobster is doing right now? It's actually peeing out of its face. What? Yeah, that's probably one thing that most people did not realize about lobsters is that their urinary glands are actually on the side of the face, and they can shoot streams of urine up to six feet underwater and that helps them communicate with other lobsters. I see that, you were just trying to pee on me. I'm peed on and pooped on by almost everything that I work with. Now, you see there are some bubbles coming out of the front of the lobster, right? So what the lobster's actually doing is aerating its gills by blowing bubbles. 
Now let's talk about the movement of a lobster. This body design is very similar to an insect, and technically, lobsters are arthropods, so they're related to bugs. And their body structure is very similar to many insect species, including this hard outer exoskeleton. Now, when a lobster is underwater, they move forward slowly, using their pinchers and their legs to propel themselves forward. They look for food, they catch it, they crush it, they tear it apart, and they eat it. But if something comes into the environment that is a potential predator, what they will do is quickly shoot themselves backwards using, see these little flipper things down here? Mm -hmm. These are called swimmerettes. And then the tail is technically called the telson. That's this big flipper on the back here. Looks like a whale tail. It does, right? And they're able, this is all muscle right here, right? And what they'll do is whoosh, shoot themselves backwards, usually into a crevice or into a hole, and then they escape the potential predator. Awesome. So I have a quick question. How do these things grow? I mean, you set up to 40 pounds. How does yes. that work? Yes, lobsters at this size, this lobster is probably around seven years old and they are very, very, very slow growers. So for a lobster to reach 40 pounds, let's say, so that's considered a mammoth, right? For a lobster to reach 40 pounds, it would probably be somewhere between 70 and 100 years of age. How crazy is that? Whoa, they can live 100 years? 100 years, or so they think. Nobody really knows for sure exactly how long, but just like turtles and tortoises, that's what scientists think, close to 100 years. Well, I think at this juncture, we're gonna put Lucy back into this tank of water. And if you guys are ready, I think it's time to get Lonnie out and see just how powerful both the crusher and the ripper claw really are. Are you guys ready? Let's bring in Lonnie. All right, let's do it. Oh, what we're gonna do, are you ready? Yeah. Mario, you got a good shot? Yeah. We're gonna take, oh boy. Come here, Lonnie. Oh, he's a beaster. All right, we're gonna place Lonnie inside. Well, he barely fits in there. That is a massive lobster. <laughs> Woo! Okay, Coyote, this is your last and final chance to call this off and save your hands. Ooh, yeah. Nope, I'm gonna go through with it, guys. I think if there was ever a time to be pinched by a giant lobster, it is this precise moment. You guys ready? I. I don't know, man. I just feel like, I don't know. I have this gut feeling like this is a really bad idea. All right, guys. Now, because these crustaceans lose a lot of their power quickly, this is gonna happen pretty much immediately. So what I'm gonna do is actually pick Lonnie up out of the tank and gently set him down and then boom, my hand is gonna go right into the crusher claw. So I'm gonna give you guys the countdown while he's still in the water, okay? Okay, so just to recap, you're gonna take Lonnie out of the tank put him onto the crate, and then your left hand is going right in the crusher claw. Crusher claw first, ripper claw second. So without further ado, I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the pinch zone with the American Lobster. Are you ready? We're ready. One, two, here we go, three. What's happening? Is he pinching? He's not doing anything at all. Nothing? Nothing at all. So you're all right? I'm completely all right. That's my hand in the pincher of a lobster. Maybe he likes you. All right, let's rethink this. Hmm. I thought this lobster was just gonna straight up pinch me. Maybe I should just try the ripper claw. You guys ready for that? I guess, man, I can't believe he didn't pinch you. I'm at a loss for words, to be honest with you, but we shall prevail. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the pinch zone with the ripper claw of the American Lobster. One, two, here we go, three. He has absolutely no interest in pinching me. Wow, that was really unexpected. I was ready for pain. All right, guys, well, this is not going according to plan. This lobster has no interest in pinching me. The little one was, this is true. Uh, I could get the little one out and see if that one will pinch me. I'd say that's better than nothing. Okay, let's try it. I'm just gonna leave this big one here and bring the little one into the scene. All right. 
All right, ready? Yep. The little one is back, and its claws are open. Ready? So crush your claw. Crush your claw. Here we go. Ready? Yep. <laughs> Not much power. <sighs> Barely. Barely. I mean, not even compared to the Dungeness crab. Let's try the Ripper Claw. Ready? Yep. Nothing. I mean, it's pinching, but not even close to as powerful as the Dungeness crab. I mean, not even close. No chance it's even going to break skin. Wow. Well. I think we're at a crossroads here where it's almost like, is the pinch of a lobster more of a myth? I mean, I've heard stories of people getting their hands completely crushed by lobsters. Let me try one more time with that ripper claw. Ready? One, yeah. two, three. No power. Really? That is all bark, no bite. Yeah, it's, it's latched onto my hand. I can feel it squeezing down, no power. Really? Like I could pull my hand right out of there. Like it doesn't want to pinch you. Not all things go according to plan. And while you may be thinking to yourself, Coyote didn't get pinched. Looks like he's gonna escape this one unscathed. Well, we're not gonna give up that easily. All right, well, we're back. And it is a lot colder out. And as you can see, it's gotten dark. In fact, it's so cold that I can see my breath and now I'm wearing a scarf. So hopefully this will help in getting these lobsters to pinch me. So without further ado, let's see if changing the setting, nighttime and much colder, helps in getting pinched by one of these giants. Let's go for it. You ready? One, two, three. And pinch me. Nothing, look at that. He's immediately just thinking flight. That's what that mechanism is right there, of flicking the tail. Let me get away, not using the claws to defend itself. Now, part of me wonders if these claws aren't so big that when he's out of the water, that he's not even capable of holding them up to pinch me. But even see down like this, watch. Just not interested in pinching. All right, buddy, I'm gonna put you back into the aquarium. Maybe Let's... Lonnie's too nice. Lonnie is your neighborhood friendly lobster. I'm gonna get the smaller one out of the bucket. Let's try this with the smaller one. Okay. Sound good? Okay, so in the blue bucket here, we have the smaller lobster. Okay. Are you ready for this? Nothing. Really? It's, ah, uh, ah, uh, there is some pressure there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yep, there is pressure, but definitely not what I was expecting. Here comes the other claw. Let's see if it will pinch down with that one. Let's see, we have two claws at the same time. Here we go. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, no. Ah. For a brief second, that was it. That definitely left a mark. Look at the back side of my hand. Can you see that? Yeah, a little pinch. That was a little pinch. Look at this side. Let's try one more. Ready? Anything? Nothing. I mean, I was pinched in all fairness. It wasn't that bad though. Not even close to the pinch of the Dungeness Crab. And it was almost more of a warning pinch where it was like, mm, I'm just gonna hold on. And then the pressure resided and it let go. I don't know, these lobsters seem to be pretty friendly. I think we have busted the myth. I don't think that a lobster is capable of giving you a very powerful pinch. Well. I have one more idea. I'm all for it. So I think what we have here are friendly lobsters and what we need are angry lobsters. And you know, if I was a lobster, it would make me angry being at a lobster house restaurant. Oh, like you're about to be cooked. You think yeah. these lobsters like understand I, that we're take we're handling them gently where we, we love these lobsters. I, I mean, I think they're smart like that. I think, you know, who knows? Maybe their intelligence is beyond what we expected. In all fairness, I guess that's that could be possible. So you're thinking we go to a lobster restaurant and we are in Maine, there are lobster restaurants everywhere and maybe we pick out one of their lobsters, save it from ending up in the pot and see if it will pinch me? 
I'm saying, yeah, let's try to go find ourselves an angry lobster. I mean, there's a lot of them out there. One of them's got to want to pinch you. I kind of feel like there is still one stone left to be unturned. I say, let's wait until morning, go find a lobster restaurant, and see if we can get me pinched. Let's do it. All right. <sighs> All right, guys, this is it. Day two in my attempt to find out, does a lobster pinch actually hurt? Now, we're here at Estee's Lobster House, which is a famous restaurant in town, which is known for having some incredibly angry lobsters. So what we're gonna do this morning is go behind the scenes, get up close with one of these crustaceans, and see if it will actually pinch me. You guys ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, this is it. Behind the scenes, and look at this. It's a trough filled with fresh lobsters. Guess we'll see if any of them are angry. You guys ready? Now these are all considered market size, so they're around a pound and a half to two pounds. So, that's about the size of our largest lobster we had yesterday. It was 2.3 pounds considered a large lobster. So, if we're right in that range, I think uh, it's probably a pretty fair test. Man, that's a whopper of a claw right there. Look how it hooks over. That might actually break skin. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. GoPro is rolling. Oh boy. I think that thing is ready to crush. All right, guys, I'm gonna dip the lobster, bring it up, and then whap, put my hand in there. You ready? Let's do it. I am actually nervous now. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the pinch zone with Giant lobster. Ready? Let's do this. One, two, three. Ah! 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 Wow, it's actually worse this time. Ah! Ah! That's a lot worse than yesterday. Ah! 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 Wow! Oh yeah, he got me good. Ah! Oh man, my hand's shaking. Wow, that is a huge difference from yesterday. Ah, man. Oh, yeah. oh gosh. Definitely didn't break bone. All right, let's try the ripper claw. You ready? One, two, three. Ah! 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 Wow, that's a lot sharper. Ah! Okay, nope, he's locked on. Ah, uh, okay, this is definitely a lot different than the lobsters we had yesterday, 100%. Ah, uh, yeah, that ripper claw is locked onto my hand. Look at that. Ah! Uh, What's the pressure feel like? Ah, uh, it's about the same as the Dungeness Crab, I would say, but it's a lot sharper. Ah, 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 ah. And every time I try to move my hand just a little bit, he locks down tighter. Ah! Uh, all right, maybe if I set it down to the water, they'll come off. You think it's off your skin? Uh, ah, yeah, maybe. Ah, uh, it's tough to tell. There's a bunch of tiny little teeth. The serrated edges are digging in. Oh, yeah, it hurts on the back of my hand for sure. You can see that. Ah, uh, I try to pull my hand out. It is locked in there. I can't actually pull my hand out. I'm gonna have to dip it in the water. One, two, three. Oh, let go, let go, let go. Ah, he's pinching down harder. Ah! 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 <laughs> ah! Good. Yikes! Wow, okay, well that was a huge difference from yesterday. Look at the impressions in my hand and a couple little blood blister type points where it really locked in. Ow! Dude, you can, I can feel my hand kind of swelling up a little bit. <sighs> okay, well, I would say that was successful. Um, much more powerful than the lobsters that we were working with yesterday. Without question, that is a much more powerful pinch, but a lobster this size, probably just around two pounds, was not capable of breaking skin or breaking bone. So, do we know why this lobster decided to pinch hard and the ones that we caught didn't? Well, here's my guess, is that this water is significantly colder than the water where we had our lobsters. Now, 
Oh wow. The yeah. cold that is. Way colder. That is very representative of the temperature of the water that would be at the basin of the ocean where these crustaceans live. It was also very dark in here. We came in and we lit it and they don't normally have these lights on. So the lobster feels like it's completely in its natural environment. And I'll tell you what, in the back of Andy's mind, he may also know that him and all of his friends could be next up on the dinner plate. But the good news for this lobster is that we're going to purchase it and release it back out into the wild. Well guys, I think we figured it out. All you have to do is find an angry lobster and you'll successfully get your hand pinched. Woo. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. You're gonna stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. When it comes to this animal's powerful pinch, what I learned is that lobsters aren't necessarily prone to pinching, especially once they have been taken from the depths of the ocean. However, with that in mind, if you come across an angry lobster like Andy, the power behind those claws is pretty impressive. And I can say with confidence that a lobster above the weight of two pounds could very likely break bone. So if you handle one, I strongly urge you to steer clear of those pinchers. All right, guys, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. We're going to release the lobsters back out into the wild. I'm going to do it one at a time. The first one to be released is going to be little Lucy. Let me take the rubber band off her crusher claw there. There we go. And I'm going to place her deeper out in the water. If I could save every lobster from the fate of a dinner plate, you better believe I would. However, lobster fishing is an incredibly important part of Maine's economy. And while many of these bizarre looking crustaceans are frequently caught for human consumption, it's important to remember that lobstermen are conservationists first, and it's the management and preservation of this species that keeps the industry alive. If you thought getting pinched by a lobster looked painful, make sure to go back and watch the episode where a giant Dungeness crab latched onto my finger. Ouch! And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure. Oh my gosh, that hurts so much more than I thought it was going to.